Today we're going to learn a simple and quick bread recipe that I believe you're sure to enjoy and especially appreciate how quick and easy it is to make. Hi, my name's Jeremy and today we're joining my wife Tina in the kitchen again as she shares with us her favorite bread recipe. Now, what I enjoy about this bread is not only is it nutritious and tasty, but it works for so many different options. So whether you want to make bread rolls or you want to make cinnamon rolls or you want to just simply uh, make buns for uh, hot dogs or hamburgers, it, it all works. And uh, it also makes great sandwich bread or just some bread to go with some soup. I hope you enjoy this recipe. It's simple. It's quick. Uh, let's join Tina now as she shares more. Hello, welcome back to our kitchen. We're going to show you the bread recipe that I use for just about everything. Um, it's our go-to. We don't usually buy bread, we usually use this recipe. So, it's so easy, I can get it done less than seven minutes probably. Well, around seven minutes maybe, by the time I grind everything and put it all in there. It's just a dump recipe, so those of you that are busy like me, uh, might appreciate something like this. Now the downside of this is you have to have a bread machine, but that's how you make quick bread. <laughs> that's still healthy and able to feed your family. For us it was an investment. We used the Zojirushi um, bread machine and, and the reason I like it is because it makes it look like a real loaf. If you don't have one, you just have a standard one. That, that This one has a loaf pan that actually makes it look like a real loaf. But you don't have to have that really. You, um, any bread machine will do. You just you can always take it out and shape it and put it in a pan and make it the size, uh, make it the loaf you want it to be. So um, another feature I like about this is um, I can do a homemade cycle. So the way I do it is I have my homemade settings put in, and I can have my my bread just like if I want to do dinner rolls, I. I can just put it on my homemade setting and then I can do dinner rolls just the way I like it. But you don't have to do that. All you have to know is that you end it after the first rise and then you can take it out and you can shape it into rolls, you can roll it into cinnamon rolls, you can tie it into knots, uh, making garlic knots, you can do all kinds of uh, fun stuff with this. But when I'm going to make bread, the very first thing I do is grind the wheat because it makes such a tastier loaf and so much more healthy because you've got the fresh ground nutrients right there. All the uh, nutrients haven't been killed. You still are able to benefit from um, the vitamin E and the different things that are in the, the grain. Speaking of grains, I'm pouring in uh, white winter wheat. It's the hard white winter wheat. Uh, regular wheat actually has 42 chromosomes. The ancient grains, um, like einkorn, einkorn only has 14, um, 14 chromosomes, and uh, so that's quite a difference between 14 and 42 that we have today. Now, we ordered a bulk of uh, kamut, and so uh, kamut has 28 chromosomes, but we'd like to try the, the einkorn or inkorn sometime, and um, see how it, it goes with that. Um, but we're doing the hard white winter wheat because I still had that left over and I figured that's what you're able to probably get from uh, local um, markets. So be sure it's the hard white uh, winter wheat. You can also sprinkle, sometimes I've put the hard red wheat in. Hard red wheat makes a heavier loaf but the uh, flavor is really that whole grain um, fresh ground taste. It adds a great flavor. So I might add maybe one cup of the hard red wheat to go with the white wheat and that gives it a great flavor. Um, many times though, now that I'm cooking with kamut, I'll just do 100% kamut and we still really enjoy that. So let me go ahead and turn this on. The Nutramil uh, is wonderful because you're fresh grinding the wheat. So let me go ahead and turn that on. It's going to be loud. So you can see it's very loud, 
but uh, it does the trick. So we are able to uh, enjoy some fresh ground wheat, which we love the flavor. So I want to mention too that um, the Kamut uh, has it's better for you. People um, with the ancient grains, the kamut, the einkorn or einkorn, however you say that, it actually, people with um, problems with their intestines, like maybe have a gluten allergy, may not have a problem with the ancient grains. The, the kind I'm using today is the hard white wheat and it actually makes it more elastic. It has more elasticity. It, um, it's more the texture of bread that we're used to today. But we actually enjoy both very much. So, uh, okay, so this, this Nutramil, you don't have to use a Nutramil. Any kind of thing that would grind grain is really what you want. So, uh, let's see what we got here. Now, what I like, though, is you can adjust the texture, I mean, the, um, the coarseness of the wheat. So I put it on the finest. So we have the finest flour. You can see here. At the end, I kind of turned it up so we have a, you can turn it up and, and it feeds faster so you have a, a more of a grainy texture. But for the main bulk of the bread, I want it to be a flour texture. Maybe a little bit of the grain as well, that would be great, just because I like that texture in my bread. Okay, so we've ground our wheat. If you have that done, then all you, the rest of this is so quick and easy. So it's just, I even have the recipe memorized. You may actually do it yourself. The basic recipe, one and one third cup of water. Now when I measure that, I'm eyeing it as I'm pouring it to make sure that it's on the mark. You um, wanna do it on one that is taller than what you're measuring because on one like this, it's going to maybe bubble up or concave down and you won't get the exact amount. With the bread machine, it's better to be pretty exact. So one and one third cup of water is what this recipe calls for. And then I've already measured out two tablespoons each of oil and honey. Now I use uh, the basic recipe, the original recipe called for a fourth a cup of cane sugar or a fourth a cup of brown sugar. And I've used cane sugar, that works great. I've used half that amount, it did fine. Um, I have honey from my bees, so I'm using honey from that. And I used olive oil. So I poured the olive oil in first so that the honey doesn't stick to the container. So it pours out a whole lot easier. But I'm still gonna need to get a spatula and clean it out. So uh, that was two tablespoons olive oil and two tablespoons of honey. Next, um, like I said, I did cut the amount down um, because honey is so sweet, I didn't feel like we needed a whole fourth of a cup. So uh, eighth of a cup and two tablespoons are about the same thing. So now instead of a fourth a cup of oil, I'm using as the recipe originally calls for, I'm using one eighth of a cup of applesauce. This is applesauce we made as a family. My, my in-laws come and we do that as a family every year. It's fun. And then I'm also, and I've already got the oil in there too. So, um, but the applesauce, the reason I put that applesauce, that's something we did just so I wouldn't have to use as much oil. So instead of a fourth a cup of oil, we're, we're using an eighth a cup of oil and two table, basically an eighth a cup of applesauce, just to do half and half. Now the next ingredient is salt. So you, this recipe calls for two teaspoons. I have had it work fine with one. It has a little bit more flat texture, but if you are on a low sodium diet, it will still turn out. It just doesn't have the same flavor. So that is just water, oil, which we mix with applesauce as well, and then honey, which you can also use brown sugar or cane sugar. So the next part of the recipe is just a, uh, four cups of flour. Now you can use many different variety, I mean, Combination. So if I want a real light texture, um, I might add a, 
uh, one cup of the real um, from the like um, bread flour from the store. Um, but this actually works really well. The hard white winter wheat is actually very um, very light. It's got a very light texture, and that's one thing I really like about it. And that's why I only use a little bit of the red wheat when I when I do that. So I'm showing you right now that if you were to buy your flour, you would spoon it in like this because it gets so pecky when you're buying it, you know it's packed into that container. So to, to do it in a bread machine, a lot of people have to say, oh, I have a bread machine and I just can't do that. It, it just doesn't ever turn out for me. Try doing this. Try spooning it into your cup and then just leveling it off smooth. That makes one cup. That being said, when you fresh grind it, it is so light because it's just been, it, it doesn't need sifted or anything. It's very light. It's not packed down. So what I do is I just scoop it and I just shake off to where it's kind of a mound like that and I just pour this. As I'm pouring it, I sprinkle it so that I'm coating the whole thing on both sides of it so that it, it covers the whole top. And so I put four cups. This is my second. I just sprinkle it where it needs, where it, you know, to keep it level and smooth. It makes a difference when I'm actually, um, since it's it's going to be doing it all itself. It, if I can get that in there real smooth and level, it actually makes the loaf look prettier because it's not mounted up on one side or something like that. It's just. Um, a nice dome on top usually. So, all right, so this is the, the recipe. Now I just need one tablespoon of yeast. I keep mine in the freezer so that it, it doesn't go bad. And what I'm using is the instant rise, the rapid rise, um, because I don't wanna wait a long time to get the loaf usually. This is usually done in about two hours, a little over two hours. So I'm just putting a level tablespoon of rapid rise yeast and I, as I put it in, I just scoop it in so that I make a hole for the yeast where it's gonna go. And I don't sprinkle this one over the whole thing. I actually just dip it down in the middle, uh, scooping as I go so that it has this little spot. If yeast mixes with the salt, it's going to deactivate that. So the way I do it that way, with it scooped into the middle, uh, then as the, the, be the beaters go back and forth, it'll all mix together and it won't be a problem. So if you have trouble with your bread um, and you've had a bread machine and you had trouble with it, try scooping it to where it's light and level um, and you can know that it's the same each time. Um, and then try uh, sprinkling it evenly over the top in the order that we put it in. And then the yeast just needs to be set in its own little hole at the top, not letting it touch the water underneath, just a scooped out little spot in the, of the flour. So that's it. So let me just put this in the machine. And we'll turn it on plugged in. Okay, so I just hit course select and I'm going to put it on a quick wheat setting and hit start. Voila, it's that easy. So in a couple hours, the house is going to smell great and we're going to show you how it turned out. Okay, let's see how it turned out. It's going to be hot. The house smells wonderful. Okay, it's tempting to spray a little Pam on that, make it shine, but we don't need to. It's not got much oil, not much sugar really, and it's a whole grain, so it's 100% whole wheat. So say you're a diabetic and um, you know when you eat white bread, 
it's gonna spike your blood sugar and drop it lower than it was. But a whole grain actually, it's like burning paper as opposed to burning coal. So this is a whole grain. It's got all the wheat germ, uh, wheat bran, all the endosper, everything part of the wheat is in it. And it's been fresh ground, so we're probably still getting the vitamin B, E, um, I think even sprouting, it might release even more vitamins, but there's minerals, phosphorus, iron, I think even some calcium. Anyway, think how much you're getting in this whole grain. Um, your body easily digests this usually, unless you have a, a gluten intolerance, but eating it, uh, especially the ancient grains, a lot of people wouldn't have trouble with the ancient grains. So let's see how it does. Now I will tell you, I have found that when I put this in the refrigerator, it's easier to cut. It's just, it just gets solidified a little bit. So if I'm gonna cut a whole bunch, it's kinda nice to have it in there just to cut. And I just keep it in a, a bag through the, through the uh, week, or well, it doesn't last a week, just a few days. But anyway, you can see the texture of it. Um, it's wonderful toasted. Um, little peanut butter honey, um, butter, vegan butter. We have some vegan butter we use. Um, you can see the way it looks, the texture. It's still spongy. It will be, when it's hot like this, it's a little more packy. But once it cools, it's a wonderful bread. And I uh, hope you enjoy it. Well, there you have it. A simple and quick, easy recipe that is likely healthier and cheaper than what you'll find in your local bakery. If you found today's episode helpful, please give us a thumbs up, consider subscribing, hit that bell icon if you'd like to be notified of future uh, episodes, and uh, look in the description below for today's recipe as well as the modified version that Tina referenced. I've also included a couple of links for the uh, devices that she referenced uh, that we use and find very helpful. Now, uh, please join us next time as we together explore greener pastures. Mm -hmm.